Hello, friends. Uh, I'm here today with Phil Wright, um, and we are going to be talking about Phil's new book, Return from RISA. Phil, I think uh, <laughs> we've been talking about this book, you and I together, for over a year now. 16 and, months. To be <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's really exciting. Um, We've started reading it as a family. We love it. It's uh, it's awesome. Um, why don't we start with you just uh, telling us, you know, why you wrote the book, um, what it's about, and what you hope you know readers are going to take away from it. Sure. Well, thanks. I appreciate the opportunity to be on here with you. Let me just start by making sure I, I add that I wrote this book with a dear friend of mine, Rick Nelson. So he's my co-author. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to write a few books. Uh, Rick hasn't written a book, and he, we always, I always said, hey, you need to write a book with me one day, and we decided to do this one, and had no idea what we were really getting into, how uh, amazing the process has been. But I got to tell you, you're the inspiration for this book, and it's because of, of this little book right here that has the lion on it. About 16 months ago, I was introduced to Michael Rush. Um, I think what happened is when when Rick and I started reading your books, we just got so excited that we finally found somebody who takes scripture and prophecy and helps us make sense of it. Um, I was a seminary teacher for a few years and I loved it. It was great. But I read your stuff and I think, where was Michael Rush when I was much younger teaching seminary? So I'm not sure you'd want to... <laughs> have seminary lessons on a lot of this stuff. Well, amazing. I know there's some of it that might freak some people out. <laughs> and that's the part we wrote about, the part that freaks people out. So I think what happened is Rick and I were talking one day after meeting you. We had this incredible meeting with you and several other wonderful people. Uh, I think we took an entire Saturday. We didn't know how long we'd be, but you remember, Mike, it was like eight oh, hours. Yeah. And it was incredible. So a few days later, Rick and I thought, you know, we need to start writing this book. And we didn't realize until we got into it where the book was going to go. Um, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to tell a story about the plan of salvation without being preachy. And one of the things you talked about in your book that, that really caught my attention as well as Rick, and I'm sure everybody who reads it, was your hypothesis at the end as to what happened to the lost tribes, the 10 tribes. And I have always, always, always agreed with that. And that was probably the most exciting part of the book to me was to read where you believe the 10 tribes went or the fact that they're no longer here on the earth. And there are so many scriptures and you bring them out in your books, so many scriptural references that people, all they have to do is read it and put it together. Uh, the first book is called Angels and Aliens. You know, the main character is a little boy named Connor. It starts when he's four years old. And basically it talks about how God created everything everything. He created worlds without number, and he put children on all of those worlds without number. You, you talk about that, Mike, in your books. We talk about how the, the 10 lost tribes, you know, go north, as the scriptures talk about, and what we present in this book, and there will be a lot more detail in the future books. It is a series. We're thinking there's four books, maybe five. If Rick has his way, there will be books without number, just like worlds without <laughs> number. Um, but we talk about this group of people that we refer to as the Luzon, which is really a name for Israel, the Israelites, uh, Israel, the house of Israel, and they actually leave, the Lord takes them off of earth as they're being taught and prepared to return from Risa, to return to the earth uh, to fulfill their responsibility when they take out the stout horn and fight with the Savior prior to the second coming. So that's one of the things we talk about in the book. But again, it's not preachy. It's just it's kind of a cool story that we kind of weave into that. There's some fun and unique characters, and uh, there's a lot of aha moments where you say, "Oh my gosh, I didn't expect this." So uh, it's been kind of it's been really fun to to weave all of that into this first book. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you know your book launch? It's coming up here in March. Yes, 5th. Um, we're going to have a book launch launch March fifth of 2022. I did a promo and I wrote 2021. Duh. Anyway, <laughs> 2022 March fifth. It's going to be in Layton, Utah, and we found a facility that holds 1,000 people, and we just started advertising this about a week and a half ago, <clears throat> and I just looked before this video, and we only have about 200 seats left in a week and a half, um, but we're excited because Michael Rush is going to be there. Um, 
the person who edited our book, her name is Erlen Moll, and she happens to be the wife of the number one fantasy fiction author in the entire world, and that is Brandon Moll. So we were so blessed to have Brandon Moll help us with this book, and, and his wife, Erlen, she just made this book so much more than we ever could have imagined. So Brandon Moll will be there. He's the author of Fable Haven and 18 number one New York Times bestselling books. He's just a great guy. He'll be there speaking. Michael Rush will be speaking, uh, a few other people. We're going to do book giveaways. We're going to have lots of fun. But I'm hopeful that those watching this video will actually have the ability to get tickets because there will not be any room to expand beyond the thousand seats. So you'll want to go to returnfromrisa.com to get your free tickets. And we're also going to have a special where you can order uh, your book return from risa.com not you won't have to pay any shipping we're going to discount it and we'll have it available for you to pick up at the event and it will already be signed um, and then we came up with another idea since people will want to read the book now but they're going to have to wait to pick it up we're going to give you a discount code to get the um, kindle version for i think 99 cents so we'll work all that out that'll be available um, to everybody who who gets a ticket to the event yeah, that's, you know, that's going to be really fun. Um, I'm going to be talking on, you know, Christianity in an infinite universe, which I love it. I love your topic. Such, a, such an awesome, you know, subject. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, uh, to doing that. Um, you know, one of my favorite things or our favorite things as a family to do, you know, we've got some of those zero G chairs and we like to go out in the backyard and just put them back and just kind of stargaze and do it. So cool to look up into the sky and to realize you know, most of what you're seeing up there i i mean most people don't really think it's it's not just a star it's a solar system and it's just like our solar system and i'm looking out there who might be looking back exactly you know, that's what I was gonna say. who's looking back <laughs> yeah. and, and some of what we can see are actual uh, galaxies you know, there's yeah. a couple of galaxies. There's, there's one you can see in the night sky. Andromeda. Yeah. Andromeda. Yeah, you can actually see the galaxy. So yeah, I, I think it's just, you know, I just think it's marvelous that uh, you write it, you know, the restoration of the church. I mean, in 1830, Joseph Smith starts, I mean, he receives, you know, the book of Moses, you know, as he starts translating, you know, the, the Bible and right away. You know, the Lord shows them worlds without number and starts talking to him about, hey, you know, your Adam and Eve aren't the only Adam and Eve. There have been many. And, yeah. you know, Moses even, I mean, just read the, you know, do I have my scripture around here somewhere? Um, <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I just hear Michael Rush say, do I have my scriptures around here? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see my scriptures, but my laptop's on top of them. And so my camera's okay. going to move all around if I pull it out. But just read, you know, the chapter heading for Moses 1. I mean, it sees... Moses sees many inhabited worlds. I mean, that's in our scriptures. That is totally cool. But, but and, we gloss right over that. We, we read that and we just read right over it. We don't pay attention to what it's actually telling us. And that's we, what I love we, about we, your we books is you, you cite so many scriptures that anybody who's read their scriptures, we've read that, but we haven't paid attention to it. And then when you put them all together like this puzzle, it's like, oh my gosh, he's right. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I mean, just like you said, you know, earlier about you know, Christ wasn't the savior of just our world. I mean, in Doctrine and Covenant 76, it talks about him being, you know, the by him and of him, the worlds were created and their inhabitants become the sons, begotten sons and daughters unto God. So, I mean, the atonement is for all worlds. So, where whereas the Lord told Moses, hey, Moses, I'm only giving you an account of this world. Um, I'm, in other words, I'm not telling you what's going on, you know, out there. The inverse of that can't be true because the people on other worlds, I mean, they know about Jesus Christ because their salvation is absolutely dependent upon what happened on this earth. Yeah. And I think that is very, very interesting uh, to consider. And it just opens up, you know, yeah. some really cool, you know, concepts and ideas, which is why I love, you know, you know, the idea of your book and the story, you know, that you tell. Well, we've had people from all over the country that are getting tickets to come to this event. So it's, it is really exciting. And uh, quite a few of them, I know why they're coming. I know who they want to see. 
and his well, initials are MBR. So, well, how how are people that you know? Because we're I mean, there's just not going to be enough tickets for everyone who's going to want to come. So, you know, I've been asked a lot. Hey, you know, is this going to be streamed? Um, is it going to be posted on YouTube later? Um, if it's going to be streamed, where can I go? Uh, what do yes. you? Yes, How yes, yes. That, so. we are going to do a Facebook live and we're going to do it with the Ezra's Eagle Facebook page. That's a group of some of your biggest fans, Mike, and they're just wonderful people. So we're going to do a Facebook live. It'll be on the Ezra's Eagle Facebook page. Uh, I think we'll also do a Facebook live on the return from RISA page. And then and then we're going to have the whole video, the whole production um, videotaped, and it will be available on YouTube. So We'll give that link to you, Mike. You can post it however you want, and we'll post it on our site as well. Okay. Well, you know, Phil, I think that this is going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, you know, I, I hope that if you know you're in Utah and you're you are available, that uh, you can get tickets um, and come and meet Phil in, in person. You know, I'll be there. Brandon will be there. Now, also, um, why don't you tell us a little about your illustrator for your book? Oh, wow. Yes. Our illustrator's name is Nathan Bersh. I probably horribly mispronounced his last name. He's a wonderful man. He is uh, a phenomenal, I'm going to rip this apart. I should have written some notes down. He actually has done illustrations for, um, you probably know this, Mike, I forgot, for the uh, the He-Man, all of that stuff. He, he's he's yeah. created the action figures. I mean, if, if you bought any type of, of sci-fi action figures, chances are he either drew them originally or created the artwork for the action figures. And he did the artwork for our book. And we only have, I think, five uh, illustrations. We're going we're gonna to continue to add illustrations with additional releases. And we created an insider page on Return from Rises. So if you go there and join the insider page, you're going to get a lot of additional stuff. But Nathan, he is incredible. And, and also the guy who did our illustration for the cover, his name is David Christensen. And this man, again, he's amazing and he's done all kinds of books. He's also going to be there. So it'll be fun to, to meet all of these people that took a part in making this happen. Uh, well, it, it'll be a fun, you know, afternoon, evening. Um, so yeah, if, if you have the availability, come out and, uh, you know, spend that uh, afternoon with us. We'll It'll be you know awesome to uh, uh, to meet you to talk to you. Are there going to be any uh, question and answer segments in the uh, well uh, program? Well, we're scheduling this event to be a two to five, um, but I, I just don't know. We're trying to you know I want you to be able to have at least an hour to an hour and a half, Mike. I know that uh, a previous event you did. I think you spoke three and a half hours, and people were mad when you said you had to stop. <laughs> So, so well, you know, I mean, it, it, so many people are fascinated by, by yeah, you know, by some of these things. And we, we've kicked around the idea of doing a question and answer. Um, my only concern with that is, is if people keep digging with the same thing, like who is Connor? Who is Connor? I'm like, you know, it's a parable. As soon as you can tell me the name of the prodigal son, who he really is, I'll let you know who Connor really is. How's that? Yeah. Uh, well, tell me this. You know, will people be able to? Um, you know, meet you. Are you going to be at a book signing table? Or? Yeah, we our plan because we're going to have a thousand people there, and we only have the facility for a few hours. We're going to all the books that people pre-order. We will sign them before the event, and we will be there to give them their books when they check in. So hopefully, okay. we can meet people as they're checking in. Um, and we're also going to have a place to sign books for people who want to buy books. Um, at the last minute. I can't guarantee how many books we're going to have available that are not pre-sold. It's so much easier if people buy it up front for us to have them all shipped in. And, and so that's what I would recommend you do. If you want a book, go to the website, buy it up front. We'll have it there for you. Okay. But we will have a place for you, Michael, and for um, uh, for Rick and I, and, and we'll have a place uh, for Brandon Mole to also sign books. But that's going to mainly be books that people already bought they're bringing. Uh, unless you want to do something, I think be cool if you did something where you had people pre-order some of your books and let's just ship them all out there and you can either pre-sign them or sign them and hand them out to people when they get there. That'd be fun too. Um, yeah, I, I'm just, uh, I, I, life is so busy for me right now. <laughs> no, yeah, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll probably um, have some books out there. I'm, I'm not going to have too many, maybe you know, 40 of each of my books. Um, 
but uh, yeah, I'd be happy to sign books if, if someone um, wants me to. Um, and and I, I love talking to, to people that have, you know, read the books and have questions. It's just, it's, it's such a fascinating subject. Um, yeah. And you've made it that much more fascinating with, you know, you know, putting it in this, you know, you know the format, um, the science fiction parable. I mean, I think this is a new genre out there, so. Yeah, we're trying to figure, even Brandon Mull can't figure out what the genre is. So. <laughs> So it's kind of yeah. fun. You know, it was fun when I, maybe I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but within days of, of having it available on Amazon, it shot to number one in Christian fantasy. So that's a, 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 a section I didn't anticipate, but hey, number one <laughs> is number one. So that was exciting. <laughs> yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, well, uh, again, people, if they want to get tickets or learn more about your book, go to the website, Return from Risa. Dot com uh, and we hope to see you there uh, on March 5th at 2, 2 to 5 in late in Utah. Uh, for more information, go to Phil's website. Thanks, Michael. This has been awesome. I really appreciate it. Thanks you. Thank you, Phil. Look forward to seeing you in March. It's going to be fun. Take care, everybody. Bye.